I did a little bit more uh, upgrading here. You can see I put in a single T right now so that I could branch off to the other one. I actually need some more of these barbed fittings uh, before I can hook up from here to the other input there. And I've hooked up this inch and a half that I had used with, I mean, I'm still going to use with that, uh, but just a shorter section here. So I figure I would show you guys what it's like to fill this up uh, and a good reason why I need the valve at the turbine and not up here like it was previously. And that's because there's bound to be air in this line if you shut it off here some air is going to come in as water leaks out. So just make sure everything's shut here, that's shut, that's shut. Then we got to turn this on, we'll see the pressure creep up. Well, not until the water actually fills most of this line, so let's do that. Now I I have a little leak down there that I have to fix yet. We can see the pressure is all the way at full operating pressure. And there's a little bit of a bubble right here. So I'll turn it on, we can see what it's doing. And I want to get a RPM reading too, uh, open circuit. It's gonna help me design uh, revision 1.0, or version 1.0 of this. So let's turn it on. You can see the bubble here is not going anywhere. And there's quite a bit of air coming out right there on the underside. Now let's see what it does for uh, RPM reading. I already have the reflective tape on there, so I'm going to put this on there and see what it does. Okay, 2,700 RPM. It's certainly worn in a lot. When I first set this up with that nozzle, it was doing like 1,800 RPMs uh, open circuit. So it's worn in a lot. I need to get a larger runner to slow it down because I'm getting a lot of friction from just being at such a high RPM. Chris Harbour said that his is operating somewhere under 1,000 RPM, so like 800 RPM. And this is would want to operate at much higher RPMs. So I, I need to adjust the runner on version 1.0 to be larger as well. And I've been in contact with uh, Joe at H-Hydro, Joe Hartsvargen or something like that. I can't remember his name right now. And he sells Pelton runners. No, not Pelton. Uh, he sells Turgo runners. And the size spoon that I need, which is the blue spoon, which is good up to a half inch diameter jet, and I'm a I'm not going to run anything more than a quarter inch on this really. So I need the blue spoon, but I need like a a really big runner, like an 8 inch runner. And his blue spoons are only compatible in a 20 spoon configuration because of the way they're mounted. So I need to figure something out to do with that. Okay, well uh, that's where we are. And hopefully with this, you see the dark clouds over there and it's lighter over there. We got some rain coming. Uh, you guys in the Northeast know what I'm talking about. And I'm uploading this straight from my phone, so you will have seen this uploaded like probably a half hour after I recorded it. And I also got a new pressure gauge coming. Bigger. It's not bent. This one's bent and it's got some goofy numbers there. It's sticky. Uh, and the pressure seems to be not the same as what it was before, showing an extra like two or three PSI, so I wonder if maybe this is creeping somehow. So I got a new one, it's a better quality and larger so we can see it more easily on the camera. Uh, so well that's where I am. Uh, I'm gonna hook up the 
the power line there, yes, it's not waterproofed yet. I have some MC4 connectors that I'm going to use to connect that to my uh, final version of wire. But this is what I have for now. So I'll, I'll see you guys around. Bye.